and I'm a local physician, uh, but I'm not speaking on behalf of any physician's group or organization today, strictly as an individual. I want to ask you a couple of questions. How many of you want to be sick today? How many of you want to go to the hospital today? Do you believe that our health care system is really the 37th best in the country, along with Serbia? No. no. How many would you like to go to Serbia to get your health care? No. How many would you like to go to any other country in the world to get your health care? No. Nobody. Why do we believe this? We've been told this. It's not true. Let me tell you the truth. The United States of America has the best health care system in the world, period. Yeah. It is true that it's expensive. You have to look at why it's expensive. It's expensive because we spend more money on sick people than any other country in the world, plain and simple. Why are we apologizing for this? Why do you think other countries spend less than we do? They spend less than we do because they ration health care to the sick people. It's very logical. Or they don't have the resources, they don't have the CTs, the MRIs, those things to provide for health care like we do. Our health care crisis is simply the logical result of politicians making promises years ago that they cannot keep today. That's right. But don't we have a sick care system rather than a health care system? Can we not make it better? Of course we can. Let me give you some ideas about where we can save money while at the same time deliver higher quality health care. First, regarding payment reform. Let's start paying for value, not volume. That means pay for outcomes, not for tests and procedures. Let's pay for coordination of care, not for fragmentation of care. Those things will save money and deliver high-quality health care. Second, regarding access reform. We're pretty much all in agreement in this country that everyone should have access to high-quality health care because everybody has access right now through your local emergency room. One of the most expensive ways to, de to deliver health care that's ever been devised. The cost of health care through the emergency room for one visit can approximate the cost for one individual for an entire year in America. We're also in agreement of most of what's contained in the Senate Finance Committee bill that's currently in front of Congress, with the singular exception of the public health care option. The public health care option. This is the Medicare variation which will, according to our president, provide competition to private insurers. I say he's got it backwards. I think private insurers are providing the competition to our, our public health care system, as it should be. I ask you, how can there be competition when your competitor is also the referee? When your competitor also makes the rules, and when your competitor can also change the rules at any point in the game? It is unfair on its face, and if this bill, if this part of the bill is implemented, it will lead to a government single-payer system where people are put into Medicare and isn't it Medicare that's going broke? Well, yeah. Why would anyone want to put more patients into a, into a system that's already going broke? When our president recently spoke to the AMA in Chicago, I happened to be in the audience and I heard him say that the public plan was not a Trojan horse designed to produce a single-payer system. I heard him say that he's not trying to bring about government-run health care. My friends, he is either extremely naive or he is prevaricating. Right. Look that one up. Americans do not want a government-funded public plan option that will remove our private health care system. Right. 